I am thrilled to be here. Uh, you know, over the years, uh, as the executive of one of the nation's largest counties, I've been, uh, been part of a lot of really great, joyous events. Also, sometimes bad things happen. Uh, you know, a couple of global financial meltdowns, a global pandemic, and a little storm back in, what, 2017 that accompanied with a momentary power fluctuation from the power coming in here uh, led to a real uh, disaster for this plant, uh, one that was a grave danger to our employees, but thankfully, thankfully, we escaped the worst. Uh, ultimately, the ecolog ecological harm was much less than we would have feared, but we c could not tolerate having the, the threat of even a momentary power sag causing that kind of thing to happen again. So we set about trying to figure out what was it we could do without rewiring the entire Seattle City Light grid uh, to give us more protection against that possibility. Because, you know, during those storm events when so much water is cascading down the hill is the most likely time that there are going to be power fluctuations. Uh, so, you know, you have uh, arrived at now a fully charged West Point, uh, assuming the indicator light behind me is actually in real time, which I think it is. Uh, and I'm here today to congratulate our employees, uh, congratulate our contractors who delivered on a promise I made to the people of King County uh, back in 2021 to ensure our frontline treatment operators would have the steady, high quality power they need to protect Puget Sound as we experience uh, the impacts of climate change. I issued an emergency declaration and I did that to expedite a major capital project, the first of its kind in the nation, to install an on-site battery system that allows West Point to ride out voltage sags, preventing the pumps from shutting down during these uh, extraordinary rain events that we sometimes have. In just two years, the project team demolished a building that was no longer in use, poured 1,600 tons of concrete for a new foundation, built out a 24,000 square foot structure that you see right behind me, and installed more than 2,000 high voltage batteries. And they assembled a rooftop solar array to help power the heating, ventilation, air conditioning that will keep this building going and allow those batteries to charge and stay charged. Completing a project on this scale, at that speed, is a remarkable achievement. And it is a remarkable achievement for our talented workforce. So today, Puget Sound's largest treatment plant, because of their work, is safer. It's more efficient. It's more reliable and resilient. And it's better prepared for the more frequent and more severe storms that will occur due to climate change. The Power Quality Improvement Project is more than a victory for civil engineering, though it is certainly that. It is a testament to our region's enduring commitment as stewards of Puget Sound. Applying 21st century technology to protect waters that have sustained life in this place uh, truly since time immemorial, uh, since the last ice age 20,000 years ago and before. To all of those who made this ambitious project a success, I want to thank you. Thank you for validating the public's trust in our ability to deliver. And for all the advancements that we've made with battery technology, it is true that our work is still powered by the people of King County. They are the ones who give us the mandate. They are the ones who give us the resources to be able to achieve our mission. We will have a tour after uh, all the talking is done here. Uh, and that tour will include uh, the interior of the building, I think, and the solar array that's on the roof. And the solar array is accompanied by pretty spectacular views of the sound of the Olympics and of this remarkable plant as well. So uh, get your phones ready. And if, like me, your phone's battery is already low, we do have a backup battery available right behind me. So with that, I'll hand it back to Cameron. Thank you for making today possible.
Thank you, Mr. Executive. Uh, I'm now going to ask uh, Administrator uh, Casey Sixkiller to make his way up to the podium. Uh, Casey is the Regional Administrator uh, for the Environmental Protection Agency's Region 10 office. EPA has been a steadfast partner to King County in making our region, uh, our regional wastewater treatment system safer, more reliable, and more resilient to climate impacts. We hosted Casey and his colleague Bruno Piggott, uh, who's the as Assistant Administrator uh, uh, for Water, uh, at this facility earlier this year. We announced then a, a nearly $500 million loan package under the WIFIA program that will help us uh, to complete 14 critical infrastructure projects that will further help improve water quality and while saving millions in interest for our local ratepayers. Administrator Sixkiller, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> Mr. Executive, Council Members, thank you all so much for being here. I'm so proud that you all are able to join us at our first inspection of this new, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, of all the speakers today, I think I'm probably the only one who has been part of this project in four different ways. One was uh, when I was Dow's uh, chief operating officer at the county after one of our uh, power uh, burps out here uh, being told very directly, go fix this and fix it now. Um, and sat down with then director Christy True. I'm delighted to see Christy here today. It uh, would not have happened uh, without her tenacity. Uh, and our partners uh, at Seattle City Light. You're going to hear from Craig uh, in just a moment. Uh, but I'm also a ratepayer, uh, and as a former deputy mayor, kind of saw this from a lot of different angles. And, and it really, I just want to really underscore projects like this do not happen. They do not happen without a partnership of all of the different folks that have a, have a part to play, whether you're the owner operator of the plant, you're the regulator of the plant, you're funding the plant either as a public entity uh, or as a, as a rate payer. And so this big building behind us and the solar array you're going to see afterward is a testament to a commitment to partnership, but also a testament to a commitment to really thinking about what the art of the possible is. Right, and thinking outside the box and not just pulling a new line, which would have been super expensive and disruptive to the community, but really thinking about ways that King County and this plant can continue to be not just a leader here in Puget Sound, but a leader nationally. And that, I think that's just a huge testament to all the folks here today and all the teams and the contractors that, um, that made this a uh, reality. So first of all, congratulations uh, to everyone. As, as, uh, as Cameron said, EPA has been a big partner not just in this project, but other projects uh, here at King County. Since 28, beginning in 2018 with a $100 million uh, investment, uh, and then as Cameron mentioned, a half a billion dollar in the WIFIA loan program uh, just earlier this year. Just to give you a sense of the size and scale of the WIFIA loan program and what a half a billion dollar commitment means, you know, since 20, and over its six year history, EPA has financed $36 billion in water infrastructure projects across the United States. So half a billion dollars is a huge number. It also is a huge percentage of our overall uh, commitment across the United States. Another thing I think to be very proud of and acknowledges the leadership role that King County plays. Those loan programs have saved ratepayers over $5 billion in financing uh, through the years to make projects like this pencil. Right? Because it's not just about addressing the needs today, and as the executive said, it's really about setting an example for the future, for what's possible. And Council Member Strauss shared with me that this is already serving as an example for solving challenges just even here in this region. Um, and so again, I think you know, leading the way is something that the county and the executive and others have been doing for years. It also is just an example of the ways the bipartisan infrastructure law continues to make a difference in communities not just here in Puget Sound, but across the United States. The Biden-Harris administration has made the largest investment ever in water infrastructure with $12 billion just in the last three and a half years going to projects just like this. And here more locally, $2 billion to Puget Sound, the Great Lakes, and our other prized water bodies, helping to protect and restore those and encourage other local uh, organizations to be part of that process. But today we're here to celebrate this partnership this investment, not just for today, but for many years in the future, whether it's climate, the water rushing down the hill, as the executive said, or really serving as a beacon 
of what's possible. So congratulations. Thank you very much. I look forward to the tour. Thanks, Cameron. So, so much has been said about the, the great um, innovation and, and partnership that's taken place as represented by this facility. Um, and there's not much that I can add to that. Um, this is uh, a truly um, an, an innovative uh, facility, uh, one of a kind, first of a kind really in the nation. And for City, Seattle City Light, we're just tremendously proud um, to, uh, to have been a part of uh, helping this come to fruition. Um, and um, ha having been you know, brought in by the county um, a few years ago uh, to sit down and uh, work collaboratively to really focus on sort of all of the long-term issues associated with, with ensuring that we have uh, a reliable and resilient um, system um, to support um, uh, you know, a strong and, and, and robust uh, wastewater treatment system uh, for our community. Um, this facility um, speaks for itself, um, and um, we are, you know, we've been pleased to be a part of it. We've also uh, worked very closely and collaboratively with the county to, to put together a long-term playbook, um, uh, focusing on operational improvements that we can make on our system and that, uh, and that the, the treatment center can make on its system. Um, and then also looking to uh, the, some of the significant capital improvements that we can um, implement in the future. Um, we've got a long history with the county, uh, not just on these kinds of um, improvements, but we've also uh, worked very, very closely on energy efficiency improvements, and those are going to be extremely important uh, to our shared energy future. Uh, so with that, I want to thank you for um, uh, inviting us to be a part of this. Look forward to um, exploring this facility in more detail and um, uh, look forward also to our continued partnership that works at multiple levels of our organization. We're meeting um, our staffs uh, on a bi-weekly basis, looking at all the operational improvements and then, and then they're connecting at an executive level on a regular basis to, to chart the future. So thank you. When we have inclement weather, especially when storms bring not only rain and high flows, but wind and lightning, we have power disturbances which have caused some of our most important plant equipment uh, to shut down to protect the drives and the motors from damage. These shutdowns cause pr process bypasses or plant bypasses. Uh, the plant operators are trained and practiced in swiftly restarting the equipment and restoring flow through the plant, but that takes time. And during that time, we discharge effluent, which does not meet our permit standards. The plant operators at West Point are wastewater treatment professionals. We take pride in the job that we do, protecting the environment and protecting public health for our community. The frustrating part of these outages for the operators is that we have no control over the cause of the, these shutdowns until now. This facility has already prevented shutdowns which would have caused unpermitted discharges. While we were performing startup, at, startup activities and testing the new equipment, there have been voltage dips which would have shut down our operating equipment. Uh, but the incoming utility power is now conditioned or supplemented by this new facility and the drives and motors keep running. Thank you. When it is windy and the lights in our control rooms dim or flicker, we operators still hold our breath and quickly check the control system to see if pumps are still running. Uh, but since this facility has come online, uh, we can exhale and just go about our job. Uh, I'd like to thank Executive Constantine and the Council uh, for their vision and commitment to environmental protection to have made this project a priority and embrace the innovative technology which makes this facility possible. There are also a lot of other people whose expertise and support made this project flow the design team, our division engineers, project management and construction management teams, uh, our contractors who, who did the construction, and our plant management team. 
But for me, the unsung heroes are the plant operators and maintenance teams who accommodated all the changes and shutdowns and interruptions required to complete this project. I'd like to, they made my job a lot easier. I'd like to finish with one thought and that is, I'm grateful and proud to have been part of this project. Thank you.